Hi, my name is Dave. Today I'm going to show you something interesting and unusual. Uh, something I don't recommend that you do under any circumstances. This is an unusual telescope. This is a Zeiss Telemeter 2. Uh, it's got an internal focusing mechanism so that the lens moves in and out inside the tube here. So it's a little bit more complicated than the common telescope. Anyway, I've decided that uh, I needed to clean off um, some very, very faint marks that I found on the inside of the lens. One thing, you know, I should comment that, you know, little tiny marks on the inside of the uh, lens elements and things are of no real serious consequence. Such issues, that little tiny minor things like that, even dust, I think you should leave it alone. You're better off to just leave it alone, use the telescope and enjoy it. It's going to be fine. It doesn't affect the image at all. So, but for whatever reason, I decided to clean that, uh, try and clean that off, clean off the inside element of this telescope. I was also, honestly, to be really honest with you, I was very curious about how this whole thing works. I've never had one of these apart. So I wanted to take a look at that and check that out anyway. I thought it would be a good opportunity to do that. So let me show you how it all worked out. Okay, here are the tools I'm going to need to remove the objective from this scope. Um, first of all, a simple screwdriver, wooden dowel, or some other something like that, a little piece of uh, tape, and a strap wrench. Uh, now, the strap wrench may or may not be necessary on other scopes, and other scopes might have a different, an entirely different construction also, so I don't know, this is just the way mine works. First thing we're going to do is remove this. Notice I'm not removing any of these other screws here. I'm not going to actually take that whole assembly completely out. All I'm going to do is remove the focuser here and show you what I've got inside there. These are, you know, everything Zeiss does is built like a tank, so this is very well constructed. Inside here you will see that this, um, this does not have a gear. This is just a friction device sort of like a kind of a strange Crayford and there's a track inside here and that um, track holds a tube and inside is the objective is attached to the end of that tube and that tube slides back and forth inside there. All right so this whole tube has to come out before I can get the objective out. Um, it's easy and there's no danger whatsoever just take it easy. It's easy to push this tube forward as you can see I think you can see that's moving and you'll see it come by here notice this screw head here the track is gone but there is the screw head now you should be able to see on on the screen that the objective is now beginning to project out so uh, we can deal it with everything else from here so let's pull this out. Now you can see that there's a, a very sturdy, this is a beefy metal tube, and the objective is screwed onto that. Um, now in my case, this was screws, screwed on so tightly I had to use a strap wrench and apply some serious torque to get that thing off. Um, probably very safe with a Zeiss housing and so forth, especially if you grip it down here. Nevertheless, that's something to do, uh, I mean, you're on your own with that. You could easily break your you know, telescope, uh, break the whole objective into a million pieces there by doing that. But, but and there's a reason it's on tight. Uh, you don't want that thing to fall off of that, you know, when it's being transported or whatever. So anyway, um, so I was able to loosen it up. This thing just unscrews, easy as can be. Notice that I'm, I'm leaving this tube in the same position. Matter of fact, I'm going to use a little bit of tape so I can line it up again and make sure that I put it back in the same position should I need to. This is something I wasn't clever enough to do the first time. And uh, it ended up being a little bit of a hassle down here. I'll show you what that looks like. Anyhow, here, now you re remove the objective. Just unscrews. And like I said, I had to apply some serious torque. Well, 
the issue I had with this lens, I don't know if you can see, this lens is just beautiful. It's spotless. But I did with, you know, under just the right light, I could detect a little something going on. And I figured out that it was on the inside surface of the lens. And it turns out, and I, I pulled it out and I tried to clean it. And uh, unfortunately, it's just a couple little, little problems with the coating. I'm not sure if the coating is failing or if it wasn't originally fully complete. Uh, I, I, suspect, I suspect it's probably been failing a little bit with time. Nothing serious at all won't affect the performance of this lens in any substantial way whatsoever. Completely unnecessary for me to do this. Um, but I did it anyway. So I cleaned it off as best I could. And of course, I could not, I can't fix a, a, a problem with the coatings. I put this back on. Now, I really, I'm not sure if I want to apply as much torque as it needed to take it off. I'm going to tighten it up real good and tight. That's all I'm going to do, though. It's hand tight. Hopefully, that will do it. Now, I've got this thing lined up, so I know where to slide this back in. And I'm going to keep it in the same position. Pull that off. Let's slide this down here. I want to make sure you can see what's going on down here. I'm sliding that in in the same orientation. Now, uh oh, there's a little wrinkle here. It's kind of running into a few. Uh, you can't see them, but there are a few little uh, bearings in there, little plastic bearings. So I'm going to have to just reach in and gently push on the objective from the front, not the not the surface of the lens, but push it and get over those little get over those little bearings. Now I've got the thing coming in. Uh-oh, see the screw? It's up there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but anyway, the screw is out of whack. So I've got to get this screw lined up. And if even if you're way off, you can rotate this. There's enough out there that you can push this back. And, Rotate this. Let me show you what that looks like. I don't know if you can tell. I'll turn it around so you can Let me turn it around so you can see what's going on here. Now I'm rotating the objective here. It's attached firmly to the tube. I just want to get that screw lined up. If that screw doesn't show up there, then you're going to have to push it back out and try again. It's really not that big a deal. So I'm pushing here, and I'm going to slide it back in. Here we go. Here I'm starting to see the track. Hey, there comes the track. Now I'm good to go. Now I can put the focuser back on, and I'm ready to rock and roll. And you might have to see how I'm rotating around back and forth a little bit. You might have to do that a little bit to get it straight. It's a pretty ingenious mechanism. It compresses that down pretty tightly. Now it's got some set screws in there. So I'm going to tighten this down pretty good. Focuser is nice and tight. You can loosen that if you want to, if it's too tight for you. And it has that nice smooth Zeiss feel to it. So, we're all done. I hope you've enjoyed watching me remove the objective from this Zeiss Telementor 2. Uh, once again, I recommend you do not do this unless it's absolutely, absolutely necessary. This is not something that should be undertaken by a faint-hearted person or uh, anybody with, with little experience. Only experienced people should ever try this and even then just don't do it unless you really, really have to. Thank you for watching.